genetics provides an opportunity to uh, better understand the biology and the pathophysiology, the mechanisms by which disease occurs. And uh, so that is what we have been trying to do. We are not looking for the stroke gene. We are looking for genes that contribute to stroke risk and hope that by identifying these genes, we will better understand um, the mechanisms of disease. And then this may lead ultimately to targeted therapies. We receive wonderful support from the National Institute of Health, uh, National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, uh, who funded a large collaborative research uh, endeavor, which we called SIGN, or the Stroke Genetics Network. SIGN brought together a group of investigators, initially in the United States, to amass the largest number of ischemic stroke cases uh, with genetic information that we could find. The project required a two-fold um, uh, attack. The first was to recategorize or subtype the ischemic strokes of all of the cases included in the main analysis. So in parallel with this phenotyping effort was the genotyping effort where uh, DNA was uh, obtained and sent to CIDR, which is the genoming center, where they genotyped over uh, 10,000 new samples uh, for this particular project. Over the course of the last two decades, we have seen mortality uh, drift down for cerebrovascular disease. So in this country, um, uh, five or six years ago, stroke was the number three killer in the United States. It's now the number five killer in the United States. We are s several steps away from um, this having immediate clinical application. However, what it does do, along with some of the earlier genetic findings, it identifies a pathway by which we could uh, develop therapy. Tetraspanin 2, which is the uh, gene uh, which is closest to the area of association in our study, um, had never uh, previously been associated with ischemic stroke. And so as we try to unpack the biology um, of how this may be playing an important role, genes that are related to that gene or to that protein through biochemical pathways and so forth also become potential targets. So it is a window into the biology that then potentially identifies ways in which we can target and intervene and alter the process of large vessel atherogenesis. As we um, uh, work to understand this, we, we will hopefully be able to um, identify those at greatest risk and identify novel treatments that may help.